you have a very strange hodge. It's an attack. It's true, man of God. And you're a beautiful woman. There's an attack, hodge. You cannot be satisfied. It's true, man of God. And that has caused sorrow in your private. All the time you disturb your, your private. It's true, man of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I demand for release. Be released in the name of Jesus. Thank you. I'm 22 years old and I'm from Malawi. This is my mother and the other one is my sister. Last week, the man of God gave me a prophecy and that prophecy is true. When I was 13 years old, I used to feel that this part of my body, it was just heavy for me. And I used to have this strange urge. It began in, during that age. Now I used to, because my father was a pastor, I used to tell him, Dad, pray for me because I can't feel this side properly. He used to pray for me. He would tell, he would tell me I'm delivered. The next day I would tell him, Dad, pray for me. The same feeling I was having yesterday is still there. He'll pray for me. You are delivered. Then I just gave up. Like I cannot be telling him every day to pray for me. After that, I went to a boarding school where I was exposed to the world. Now, my friends introduced me to drinking. I started drinking. From the first day I started drinking, I liked alcohol like very much, and I never stopped drinking. And at what age were you when you started drinking this alcohol? I started drinking at the age of 15. And then I continued drinking, going out with my friends until in that secondary school, I was expelled. Like they removed me from the school because I started, I made people start strike because of we were drinking, we were having party until we started destroying the school. After that, my mom took me to a school because then my father was angry that he was not going to pay fees for me. My mom now took me to this secondary school, a day secondary school. Now she was paying my fees. There, I wasn't even, the whole term, I can say, I entered in school maybe one week, the whole term. I, I could just get to school, go with my friends, would just go straight to town and buy alcohol and drink and start making, come back to school, start making noise, and I was ex expelled again. Until I, the Form 4 exams, I wrote them while I was out. I, I, I was coming and writing the exams. Then I went to the university where now I was exposed to a new world of freedom. Because it was also far away from home now. I'm free. Mommy is not there. Daddy is not there. Now I started drinking excessively. Every day I'll get drunk. After class, maybe I'm going to class, I'll be drinking. Now this other day, after three weeks, I met this boy. Now he was smoking Indian hemp. I was like, ah, ah, guy, what are you smoking? He's like, this is weed. My friend, it can get you high. Now I'm like, ah, man, I want to get high, higher than the most high. Now the guy introduced me to weed. I loved the weed so much that I loved it more than alcohol. I could smoke like smoke in, in class everywhere I go and they, they started calling me banana. That was my name now. Beautiful and high nana because I was always high. If you could see my eye then, you, you can't even see this white thing. It was not even red but black. Brown, I don't know what I can call it. I could drink, I said, I used to drink like in the morning, evening, everywhere I go, I'll be drinking. Now, 
my father died. I was alone at school. And then I used to cry about him, whatever, whatever. Now I forgot about it. And my mom saw that because we're giving her money, it is the reason why she's drinking. Now my mom stopped like sending me mom. She could just send me enough money for just, just for food or my pocket money. But that money, I could count it and it couldn't take me anywhere to drinking. Now I told my mom this other day when I was at holiday, mom, are you serious? You have stopped giving me money, your daughter, money. She was like, yes, I've stopped. I'm like, okay, I'll find money in my own ways. Now I challenge my mom that I'll follow men. I started following men. If you're a man, I won't love you just because. I'll tell you I love you. I'll, I'll just tell you I love you, but I love your money because I want you to buy me alcohol. I want to drink every day. I'll just come out from my house and start walking. I'll just be walking. I don't know where I'm going. I'll just find myself in the bar and I'll be drinking. Like, people would just buy me alcohol. And this led me to having, to, to, yes, to start following men. My boyfriend left me. He was like, ah, you are a prostitute. How can I be with a girl who, who follows men just because of alcohol? Just because I'm poor, then he dumped me. Because now people know that I love alcohol. These two girls, they were in fourth year, because by then I was in first year. They called me, banana, come to our room, we should drink. They bought me wine and a, a bottle of vodka. We start drinking, we start drinking. And after I got drunk, they slept with me, both of them. The women, they slept with me. And then after that, the spirit of man entered me. Like, I would, I would start when a woman is passing by me, I want to look at her behind. And it also led me, because I cannot approach the women, I was, I, I'm shy, I won't approach the women. It led me to masturbating. I'll just look at the women and I'll masturbate. And it also led me to pornography. And then when I was also in third year, the first third year, not this one I'm going in, Two boys now, we were at a party also drinking. Two boys now raped me again. And that, it led me not to, it led me to, to start hating men now. I did not like men anymore. And then that led me to start masturbating like frequently. I, could, I can masturbate maybe five times a day just to satisfy myself. And then I was not satisfied the drinking, the smoking, the masturbating was not satisfying me. When I'm drunk, I, won't, I would drink more than, more than any man who I've ever met who, who drinks. They can't challenge me when it comes to alcohol. They can't challenge me when it comes to drinking. I would drink and smoke maybe 15, 15 blunts a day. Now, because of my drinking and smoking, I used... I, I wasn't entering school. They suspended me for the first time. And then I went back to school. I was continuing the same behavior that I was doing, challenging my teachers. I would be talking funny things in class. And then they suspended me for the second time. Now, I, one day I was sitting, like, I, I look at my mom. She would be crying for me. She would be complaining. My neighbors would be saying all sorts of bad things about me. And then I looked at her. I'm like, Mom, but then you have a God. Because she has taken me to different places, a lot of places, and no solution. I even used to challenge the pastors that, me, you cannot deliver me. You deliver me today, I'll drink again tomorrow. And I'm even drunk now. I'm even high now. After he just prays for me, I'll go out and smoke and come and tell him that, I've smoked the weed. Have you prayed for me? And then I saw to it that my mom was complaining. And I've always been watching Emmanuel TV. Like in our house, it's like something that is there. We always watch Emmanuel TV. Now I saw that the man of God, TB Joshua, is the only one who has the power that he can deliver the spirit in me. So I told my mom, Mom, don't just waste your fees because now you send me again to school and I know I'll be suspended again. 
So just take me to the man of God. And then that's when she brought me here. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. So you mean even to the point where you came here, you were still smoking, still drinking, still engaging in all of these things just before you arrived here in the church? Yes. Like the week before I came here, I, now I, I was drinking more, more than how I used to drink before. I tell my mom that, let me drink for the last time because I know that this, ma this your man of God called T.P. Josh will make me fall. Because I've never fallen down from any, any pastor. Like, no pastor has made me fall down. I'll just laugh at them. I was like, Mom, I know that this pastor of yours would deliver me. And then this should be my last time of my drink. Now I was drinking until the day that I came here. Wow. Well, we thank God that God brought you here to the Synagogue Church for Nations. Now, you said in your experience that when you're being prayed for, you never had an experience of falling down or, or receiving a touch from the anointing of Jesus Christ. Can you describe to us when Prophet T.B. Joshua prayed for you? What happened to you? Just describe that experience. At first, he was moving and touching everyone. And then he touched me. And I felt something like I was so angry and I wanted to scream and I don't know what happened. After that, that's when he came and, and gave me a word of prophecy. I just felt I don't know how to explain. I felt this power in me and I felt that this part of my body, something just left me and my heart was free like so free, like I've never, I've, like I've said, I've never been sober since, since I was 15 years old. But that time it was like, I am high on something that I've been searching for. Like, I'm fully satisfied. That's how I felt. Well, let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. That is an encounter with the power of God. And sister, it's been one week now. Just testify, how is your life now? After the deliverance and the prophecy, what are the changes you've experienced in your life? I'm so free in my heart. Before then, I used to have spirit of anger. Like, very, I used to be very, very angry. I would just tell my mom that it is my head that is paining me. But I will just be angry for nothing. Just angry. Now, I am so free. I don't know. I feel light. And I can talk to my mom freely. I can talk to my sister very well. My heart is free. I don't have bad dreams. And I, I know there are beautiful women here, but I haven't had the time to look at them. And I don't know what happened. It's just not in me anymore. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. And we saw in the, in the prophecy, the man of God said that you would even attempt to satisfy yourself through masturbation to the point that you would even injure yourself. But since that prophecy and deliverance, every urge for those things has disappeared. Is that right? Yes, completely. I don't have the urge of masturbation. I've, I've been sleeping properly. I'll sleep the whole night. And I haven't thought of that spirit of that, must, that urge is no longer in me. I don't want to masturbate anymore. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. So, sister, we believe you'll be in a position to give a word of advice, especially to young people out there who may be living the kind of lifestyle you were once living, uh, involved in the spirit of lust, addiction to various things such as alcohol and drugs. You are a living witness to the power of God and the changes that He can bring in your life. What is your advice to such people? My advice, first of all, to young people of the, the people who are going through my situation, the only highness you can get on earth that will satisfy you is from God. Those weed, alcohol, cocaine, whatever, will, will not get you anywhere, but just run to God. It is only the Holy Spirit that can give you the high. As you can see me now, I'm sober. I feel happy. Those things will not make you happy. They'll just disturb you mentally. For you parents, never give up on your children. My mother, if she gave up on me, I could have been something else, but she never gave up on me. Don't disown your children. Ne just bring them close to God because it is the only, God is the only one who can help you. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ.
We give all the glory to God Almighty. So at this point, let's just hear a brief word from our mother. And we thank God for what he has done in the life of this family. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. My name is Mrs. Maria Gemezuru from Malawi. This one is my daughter, Hanam Gemezuru. This one is Vinjeru Gemezuru. Vinjeru means wisdom. Now, uh, I'm short of words. I'm the happiest woman in the world. I've suffered, really suffered with this girl. It was a challenge, big challenge. I could not sleep. I could not eat. I was always praying, praying to my God, listening to the teachings of man of God. One day, I was angry, very angry. I whipped her. I whipped, I wanted to kill her. After that, then I started watching Emmanuel. Then man of God was teaching that you cannot force your children maybe to go to church or to do good things, but always pray for them. I believed in that teaching. I started praying day and night. Uh, after praying, maybe she would come and knock. Stop, you woman, stop praying. What are you praying? Can you see now I'm smoking? When you pray, it's when I smoke more. When you pray, it's, it's when I drink more. Can you stop praying? I told her that I will not stop praying until you get delivered. And indeed, Today, she is delivered. I'm happy. Hallelujah. And what are the changes you've seen in your daughter's life since that deliverance? Oh, she's a good girl. She can pray. She can read the Bible. We can chat. We can communicate. In the morning, she, uh, after uh, praying in our room, she'll come in the altar and pray, read the Bible, She's discussing a lot about her future. I'm very, very happy. Praise God. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. Indeed, the evidence of Jesus Christ is lives changed. So finally, madam, what is your word of advice to parents, especially out there watching? The advice to uh, all parents, especially women, Please continue praying for your daughters. Don't give up. Don't shout at them. Pray, pray every day, every night. Uh, keep on checking in their rooms. Me, I didn't know that she's smoking or drinking. But one day, I was clearing their rooms. It's when I discovered that there is Indian hemp, a bundle, big bundle, bottles of uh, beer, such as of different types of beer. Uh, if you can go to her room today, when you are here, there are a lot of bottles, cigarettes of Indian hemp. So keep on checking their rooms, keep on praying for them day and night, listening to man of God's teachings. Amen. Lastly, I would like to thank man of God for keeping us for almost two weeks. Thank Emmanuel TV and Emmanuel Partners. Emmanuel. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. Thank you, Jesus, indeed. So let's just finally hear a quick word from the other sister to cap off this wonderful testimony. Emmanuel. My name is Vinjerim Gemezuru. The person standing next to me is my sister. The other person is my mother. I knew that my sister used to drink because we used to sleep in the same room. So I'm kind of allergic to any, I was allergic to smells. She would come and sleep on my bed, she would be smelling alcohol, but I never told my mom until she had to find out on herself. The time she went to university, she started drinking and smoking. I knew everything, but I could not tell my mom. Because the moment you tell mom, mom would ask her, she would get angry, sometimes she would beat me up. Then sometimes when you're moping, she would pass. The, when you ask her why, 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 why she's passing, she would start shouting at you and talk a lot of stories, a lot of lies. She would shout. Sometimes she would 
get angry at everyone and leave the house. She would leave the house in the morning and come back the next day in the morning, take a bath and go back. Wow, so we can understand the severity of this addiction in the life of your sister, but ever since her deliverance, what can you testify about the changes in her life? Now we can talk. At first, when you tell a story, she would drink and come back and tell everyone the whole story. The story was supposed to be a secret, but she would tell the, the whole neighborhood who actually know the story. People would surround, you, they would know your whole secret. She never used to drink like juices. She hated juice. She hated eating, but now she can eat, she can drink juices. Amen. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. We give all the glory to God Almighty. We thank God for what he's done in the life of this family. We just have one final question for our sister. Um, sister, in the midst of this, could you tell us when you were smoking and drinking, in your in terms of your health, what, what began happening to your health as a result of these addictions? My health was affected that if I don't smoke, I wouldn't eat. If I don't smoke for three days, I wouldn't eat for three days. And it, it caused seizure. I had now epilepsy. When I drink, I'll fall today and though I'll go back, but it was affecting me. And I had loss of, I could forget everything, like loss of memory. But ever since the deliverance, all of those experiences, the seizures, the loss of memory, everything has come to an end. Yes, I can even eat more than my mother. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. Mom, I'm sorry you should forgive me, and I love you. The man of God says we should not keep offense. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ.